Many years ago, I walked into a GameStop and bought a copy of Skyrim for $5, and 300 hours later, I emerged from my mother's basement with a headache and a newfound love of video games. I've dumped thousands of hours into playing games, and most of them are narrative and story-driven. There's something compelling and unique about the way games can handle narrative, and as someone who has always been obsessed with stories of all kinds, games offered a new way to tell and look at them. So, when I came upon an article in The Atlantic by Ian Bogost entitled, Video Games Are Better Without Stories, I knew I had to respond. However, instead of slowly and systematically destroying all of Bogost's arguments in a clear show of narratological dominance, I'm only going to focus on one element from his article, namely the idea of environmental storytelling. Bogost's article analyzes walking simulators like Giant Sparrow's What Remains of Edith Finch and questions whether or not these games are games. He also argues that the environments these games create are not feats of storytelling, but rather novel expressions of the capacities of a real-time 3D engine. However, setting aside the fact that What Remains of Edith Finch presents players with a lot more than just environments and character vignettes in order to tell its stories, Environments in all games and in all stories can play a huge part within the narrative. It is true that a setting doesn't count as a story itself, but environments and settings are more than just novel expressions of the capacities of a specific medium. They are instead integral parts of narrative. In order to explore the role of environments and settings in narratives, I'm going to focus mostly on environmental storytelling as it relates to video games, while also providing some examples of how other mediums use setting and space to further their own narratives. Many of the ways games use environments relate to other narrative techniques used in other media, and part of my goal here is to relate the narrative techniques of video games to other, more traditional forms of narrative to prove that games use environments as narrative techniques, not just as a way to show off their 3D graphics. But before we get into any specific examples, we need to understand what environmental storytelling is. One of the first people to use the term was Donald Carson, an illustrator and designer who is known for his work in theme parks like Disneyland and has also worked in design for theaters and video games. In the year 2000, Carson published an article entitled Environmental Storytelling, Creating Immersive 3D Worlds Using Lessons Learned from the Theme Park Industry. The article discusses his experience designing theme park environments and how the same principles can apply to games. Carson uses the term environmental storytelling to describe the way designers can create an environment that furthers the story. Now, Carson defines story as an all-encompassing notion, a big picture idea of the world that is being created, which is pretty loose, but his principles still apply when talking about a narrative. So environmental storytelling can apply to everything about a game's environment, from the lighting to textures to props, and even the way the player moves through the space. Let's take the introduction of Nintendo's The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example. We start the game in a small dark room while we learn the motion controls and are introduced to the Sheikah Slate, and a disembodied voice reinforces the sense of mystery already conveyed by the environment. As we progress outside the room, we climb up and out into the beautiful world of Hyrule. The camera pulls back and now we are standing above the world, looking out onto the landscape. The lighting, textures, and our upward movement all invoke feelings of awe and discovery, and all help to tell the story of Link and the player's movement from potentially lost and confused after waking up in an unfamiliar place to the excitement of exploring a beautiful open world. Games have a lot of ways to use movement through a space to invoke emotions in players, and textures and lighting are all elements of the environment or the setting that help reinforce the game's narrative. We can see how authors can also use the environment to further a story by looking at Margaret Atwood's novel, Oryx and Crake. Besides just using very specific words to describe the setting, like calling the sunrise a deadly glow and saying the crashing waves sound almost like holiday traffic to give us the post-apocalyptic vibe of the story, she also uses the protagonist's position and movement through the world to reinforce the story's major themes and push the narrative forward. The protagonist, Snowman, lives completely separate from a group of genetically modified humanoids called the Krakers. Despite the fact that the world is dangerous, Snowman prefers to live outside the marked boundaries of the Krakers' territory, 
forgoing the safety in numbers and the relative safety of their animal-repelling urine in order to live alone. This highlights how Snowman does not see the Krakers as people. Readers are allowed to make their own conclusion about the Krakers, but Snowman's inability to connect with them and see them as people is highlighted through his physical position in relation to them, as well as his thoughts. Also, Snowman's physical journey back to the Rejuvenescence compound mirrors the memories of his past and how they all lead up to the events that took place there. In short, Atwood uses the setting of Oryx and Craig, Snowman's position in space, and his movement through the setting to support her narrative in the same way Nintendo and other game developers use environment design, space, and player movement to convey their stories. However, environmental storytelling isn't just about carefully crafted environments. At the 2010 Game Developers Conference, Matthias Wirch and Harvey Smith gave a presentation entitled What Happened Here? Environmental Storytelling. In the presentation, Wirch and Smith differentiate between environment design and environmental storytelling, defining the latter as the act of staging player space with environmental properties that can be interpreted as a meaningful whole, furthering the narrative of the game. The examples they use often refer to little vignettes, like this example from Bethesda Game Studios' Fallout 4, but depending on one's definition of environmental properties can also refer to a more complex story puzzle, like this example also from Fallout 4. In order to discover what happened to the residents of this vault located under Malden Middle School, players need to read a number of terminal entries and interpret a series of props and skeletons. The game never outright tells you what happened, but enough clues have been left to allow an astute player to figure it out. In both these examples, part of their function within the game is to include some form of interactivity. According to Wirch and Smith, one of the functions of environmental storytelling is to build player investment by allowing them to interpret the environment on their own, but they also argue that environments should advance the game's narrative in some way. In the examples from Fallout 4, we can see a major preoccupation with death, which makes sense as part of the game's narrative deals with nuclear apocalypse. The game constantly reminds players of the people that died in the past and puts players in situations where they must decide which side of a conflict must die, sometimes questioning whether those people deserve death or not. By using both environmental vignettes and story puzzles, Bethesda makes sure to remind the player of one of the game's major themes and ideas. This aspect of environmental storytelling is a lot harder to relate to other forms of media because a big part of it relies on a player's ability to freely explore the world. However, Alex Hirsch's TV series Gravity Falls is one example of a story that integrates a series of puzzles throughout its environments and the opening and closing credits, allowing viewers to use their problem-solving skills to engage with the story and build investment. In the case of Gravity Falls, the show is centered around mysteries and solving puzzles, so including some for viewers to solve themselves fits well within the show's themes. An example of what a vignette might look like in another medium is this annotated map from Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War. The map is diegetic, meaning it exists within the story world, and includes annotations written by a character who does not appear within the novel. The notes suggest a story, someone has not returned a different map, the note maker ate a quiche at one of the locations, and there's the question of why the map is being made and annotated in the first place. But no real detail is given. Like the vignette, it's more a function of setting that hints at other stories than an actual story puzzle itself. Also, like in a game, readers can decide whether or not to read the notes, whether or not they want to connect this map to other annotated maps within the series, and whether or not they want to seek out other references or stories about the characters creating the maps. Including these maps not only allows readers to better visualize this huge and potentially confusing story, but it also reminds the reader of just how huge the story is. All of the books in Sanderson's Cosmere collection are connected, but the Stormlight Archive is especially so. Connecting to many of the more mysterious recurring characters throughout the Cosmere and revealing more about this massive universe than many of Sanderson's previous works. The maps serve, in part, as a reminder of how important this story is within the greater lore of the Cosmere, and they can also serve as some minor foreshadowing for future stories. Environment design is, especially in games, a function of narrative, integral to the way they tell stories. Because some techniques of environment design, like space, movement, puzzles, and vignettes, also relate to techniques used by other storytelling mediums, 
we see that they can be key elements of the narrative and not just shows of creativity or the capabilities of technology. An environment can be used to forward the story and expound on the work's themes and ideas. It can help an audience engage directly with a work and be a fundamental part of its narrative. Video games are a narrative medium. They tell stories in new and interesting ways that relate to other media but aren't exactly the same. In short, games are capable of using their environment in new and compelling ways to tell some unique and amazing stories.